Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Blue Note Jazz Club here in New York City. Singer songwriter, band leader, Sandra St. Victor has really been doing her thing for the last 25 years. Whether she continues to record with the Groove Family Stand, to writing and producing for artists as diverse as Paula Abdul, Prince, Shaka Khan, she refuses to be stuck in a box. Her latest project, At My Spheres, is the first of five EPs that she plans to release. And these EPs are going to really, really showcase her ability to perform rock, soul, R&B, hip-hop, the whole gamut. Dallas, who were some of your musical influences and who exposed you to music? And I, under, I, I, I understand that you really wanted, you started off to be Leotine Price. Yeah, I did. I went to school. Uh, there's a school called Arts Magnet in Dallas, which uh, it's a um, high school for, for, for performing arts, basically. I went there. Erica Badu went there. Nora Jones went there. Roy Hargrove went there. Edie Brickell went there. I mean, I could go on. A lot of people went to this, came out of that high school. But um, yeah, I, w I started out singing classical music, and I wanted to I wanted to emulate Leontine Price. Uh, at some point after high school and uh, college, even, I realized that I wanted to create music. That meant a lot to me as well. And as if, as a classical artist, you basically are uh, just singing songs that are hundreds of years old. <laughs> and uh, you know, maybe every now and then you get something interesting. But I wanted to write and and put out what I felt more deeply and intricately. A hundred million little things about you Spheres. This is the first of five EPs that you're getting ready to release. And you hooked up with Mark DeClive Lowe. What was this experience like? Oh, man, it was awesome. He's such a, an incredible, incredibly talented musician. People look at him as a DJ, but he's a musician. He's a, a Chick Corea meets like quest love <laughs> i mean or you know just he's got all of it going on so it's um you get in a room with somebody that creative something interesting is bound to happen you know this cat is from new zealand but he lives in london and just like you said first time i heard his music i was like this guy is musically forward as far as his influences right, right. yeah he basically is credited with um the broken beat uh, movement really, really growing, exploding over there. He lives in L.A. now. He was in New Zealand, then he moved to London. Now he's in L.A. So he's bringing that whole vibe like to the other side of the water on a real serious point. He's, 
he's killing. He's killing. He's, if you follow him around, he does not just me, but he does Cy Smith and and uh, uh, Bimbi Sekwe and just quite a few other real key, you know, vocalists. He, he look he he hooks up with people not just to hook up with them, but people that he can vibe with. Eclectically, you guys actually this was kind of like a match made in heaven. You know what I think so. And you know when you if you had not heard it and you just hear the two names together, you might think. Well, how does that work? She's rock soul and, you know, he's broken beat. But it really, we got in the, in, first was on stage. We got on stage together. And uh, we just jammed for like almost two hours. And it was like, oh, okay. Oh, I see where we at. It was just the next level kind of thing. And I felt that. We both felt that immediately. Your music has been classified as aggressive soul i mean because you've, <laughs> you've, taken, you've taken all genres of music. I mean, aggressive music, funk. R&B, rock, I mean, and there's some classical elements to it also. Yeah, yeah. What has evolved in your head over the last 20 years? Because I followed you in every variation of everything you've done. <laughs> well, I think the main thing that I've come to grips with is that I'm not, I cannot define myself. So I can't expect anyone else to, one else to define me. I have tried to figure out for years, okay, what category do I fit in? Am I a rock singer? Am I a soul singer? Am I what am I? You know, am I a rock soul singer? Am I a neo soul singer? All of that stuff does not clearly uh, define what I feel. None of it, none of it, because it all does. So from now on, I refuse to be categorized. I know a lot of artists say that, but I am proving that because that's what I do musically. If you come to the shows, you will see it all. You know, <laughs> you might feel like you've been on a roller coaster ride, but it, it'll be a good good feeling. mentors um, really kind of helped you and continue to help you Shaka Khan and Nona Nona Hendrix I understand that for years Shaka's been a real big fan and supporter of yours and Nona also kind of comes from that aggressive soul with LaBelle tell me how those sisters have really played a very important impact on your life and how has it been working behind the scenes with them as a person who sang behind them as a person now who's can do pretty much writing for them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, things have a tendency to come full circle. Um, Nona is really just since uh, family stand days, she's always been a major supporter. Um, and, of, you know, seeing her in the, in the audience at the family stand shows was always like, you know, a major high for me. Um, and, you know, uh, we've back then even started writing stuff together for my lecture project. Um, she's just always been re really, really, uh, uh, sincerely uh, down to help and, you know, and we can collaborate. And, and, and today, to this day, I mean, she's just like my girl. I mean, and of course, Shaka, uh, I toured with Shaka for, for several years. And then wrote stuff with her uh, uh, for Prince and with Prince and that sort of thing. And uh, Shaka is probably one of my best friends. Um, 
I don't, you know, I don't, I, I don't, you know, I don't have the, I don't want to be, you know, in clubs, public relations, not because that's not my relationship with Shaka. When she comes to the, the gig, she has to, she begs me to come to the show. I don't want to go to the show. I'll be at the hotel. When you get back, we'll hang out. You know what I mean? Because she's like my sister and she's like uh, one of the, the main people I go to to talk about um, anything that's going on in my life, usually personal, you know, business stuff we could talk about all the time, but personal stuff, she's like, um, she's been through a lot. And her life, you know, her life experience, experience has brought her to where she is so strong, so focused, and so on top of just, you know, knowing how to take care of herself. So her, her just, she's a living example. But the fact that, that I love her and she loves me, you know, it, it's, it, it's real, really, she's an integral part of my, my personal life. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace, reporting live here at the Blue Note here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Sandra St. Victor for her time, as well as DJ Logic for his efforts and his talent as well. As always, please visit the website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column and my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Peace. God bless.